Let's now switch gears now. Our topic many of you have been waiting for in agribusiness. We want to show you a radical method of farming known as hydroponics. And of course, if you're a farmer or one with an interest in agribusiness, then this is a show you'd not want to miss. Let me introduce my guest in studio. I'll start with the ones on the table first before we go to the display we have there. Next to me is Francis Kaviru, who is a hydroponic consultant, Mirama College. Karibu sana. Thank you. Right next to him is a, is a person who has benefited from this particular initiative, James Nyaga, who's a manager at the Kabete Rehabilitation. You might be wondering, what is he doing here? We'll explain to you shortly the sort of benefit they've received from this type of agriculture. But on the other side, where all the action is happening, is Samuel Bogwa, a technician, and right next to him is hydroponics. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, uh, hydroponics, hydroponics. Hydroponics. Yes. I feel like it should be hydroponics something. It's not hydroponics farming or... It's hydroponics farming. Hydroponics farming. Yeah. And that's what we are seeing there. Exactly. Okay, I have so many questions to ask. Let me try and compose my thoughts. Explain, to, okay, what is hydroponics, first of all, and how did that name come up? Uh, hydroponics basically means working without water. Working without water. Yeah. Okay. Working with water, sorry. Or oh, working with, with water. water. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we are working without soil where we grow plants uh, suspended in nutrient solutions. Uh, basically, we have different systems of the hydroponics. We can grow different kind of crops. We can do things like uh, we can do crops like uh, fodder, fodder for animals. And when it comes to human beings, we can do vines like tomatoes. Uh, we can do lettuce, like you can see. Uh, we can do spinach. Uh, we can do collard greens, of which it is called sukumawiki in the in the common language. Yeah. So, okay, so a lot of options are possible with this type of technology. Exactly. I read, a stu I read a little bit about a study that indicates that hydroponic systems are at least 10 times more efficient in water usage. Yes. Um, and also um, with the hydroponic system, barley, for example, grows to about 30 centimeters mm -hmm. in five to seven days. Yes. While if you are to use the conventional farming, it would take several weeks. How does that happen? It sounds almost magical. Actually, it's basic biology. Okay. You see, with the hydroponic fodder, what we are doing, we are germinating it. Yeah? The reason why we are doing that, uh, we need it uh, to increase the protein content to be fed to animals. That way you are reducing the amount of money that you are using to feed your animals. If uh, con uh, in conventional farming, you will lose about 300 shillings on the expensive feed, uh, the ungas and, and what have you. But in this system, you only use 90 shillings per animal. Per animal? Yes. Do you need fertilizer with this system? No, you don't. It's as organic as it comes. None of the chemicals? No chemicals. Okay. So um, I'll be working over there shortly, but just explain to us. So what I'm seeing, I'm seeing some letters. Yes. I'm seeing some tubes. Mm -hmm. What's the usage? I'm seeing the structure, of course, as well. Yeah. Talk to us about the role each of them plays. Now, we have the pipes there. The pipes, they use, they, they, we use them to hold the hydroponic cups. Okay. Hydroponic cups, okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Then we have we have uh, we have the cups themselves, and then inside the cups, uh, for the support media, uh, for the crops, we have pumice, volcanic rock. Okay. Where do you get that from? Any place with volcanic activity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We also have cocoa peat from the coast. Yeah, these are ground coconut husks. Okay. okay. Now this is what we use as the support media. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the system there, we call, we call it an A-structure system. And I can see the A here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, inside the pipes, that is where we run our nutrients from. Mm -hmm. Then the roots, they can absorb all the nutrients. And that, that way, we reduce the time the crop will take. Yeah. Because this one now, uh, with the system, we only need six weeks yeah, to grow a full-grown le lettuce. Yes. In conventional farming, you'll take more. You'll take more time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, even as, as uh, so you've mentioned the types of crops that flourish with this, and you yes. took us through that. Mm -hmm. Can you effectively do this indoors? Yes, you can do this indoors. Even in, in Singapore, they feed people from indoors. They have buildings, story buildings, doing the same. Mm. Yeah. And it's now we have it in the country. <laughs> It sounds too good to be true, Bonakaviru. It is very true. It what? is very doable. Uh -huh. It can be done even on rooftops, yeah, at your balcony. And you can also do it commercially. What are the challenges? So, it, it can't be all, all good, all um, um, the cost of this setup? Uh, the cost, for example, this setup will cost you about 30000 Okay. Okay. But this is soilless farming. The other thing we also have to understand is you're also reducing your cost of production for the crops. Mm -hmm. Remember, you'll never use a djembe, okay? You'll never use uh, uh, things like pesticides. You reduce the pest infestation by up to 80%, okay? And then when it comes to, it is also organic, yeah? 
because uh, when it comes to pesticides, uh, we use organic pesticides, so things like uh, titonia. Uh, you mm -hmm. know Moarubaine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a well-rounded system. It's a well-rounded system. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head ar around that. So when you show this to farmers, mm -hmm. what sort of reaction do you normally get? Uh, the first thing, is it GMO? And is it GMO? <laughs> no. It is not GMO. Mm -hmm. How expensive is it? Uh, the initial cost, yeah, it's a bit expensive. But when you look at the long run... And have you given us the full cost? For example, you say the setup is 30,000. Yeah. You've talked about volcanic rock. You've talked about all those. How much will that, all that set me back? Now, uh, let me give you a typical example of okay. a commercial greenhouse. Okay? Uh, for an 8 by 24 greenhouse, yeah? In total, you spend about 700,000. Now, for the commercial greenhouse, you'll be able to make about 1.5 million within your first year. If everything goes okay. Everything goes okay. If everything goes well, okay. And you have the expert to consult and all that. Yeah. So, okay. It, uh, let me bring in Bona James Nyaga. He's a manager with Kabete Rehabilitation. You've had a chance to use this uh, on your location. Uh, you can explain to us what impact it has had. He's talked about how easy it sounds, you know, when, but you are someone who has used it on your end. Tell us a little bit about how the experience has been setting this up at that rehabilitation center. Okay. Thank you, Bona Maura. You know, with, uh, with the rehabilitation center, we are talking of children who are in conflict with the law. And uh, part of, apart from the character formation of the children, we also give them other vocational activities, skills to enable them to cope when they go back, in their, back into their communities. So you find that among the programs that we are undertaking, the programs, we have carpentry, we have mechanic, we have tailoring, and we also we have um, we have now we have introduced this form of farming because you see it is now farming. So this one we find that it is now going to enable the, the children when when we release them when they go back to their community they have something they can go back to. So you find that within the institution these students are able now to to, to understand the modern form of farming. Of farming. Because you know we are encouraging the youth to think of, to go the, 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 the farming way. Instead of thinking of always when they graduate from the institutions, they are always looking for the current job. How long does it take the, the, young, the, children, the young boys and girls who are in your institution to understand this new form of technology? Remember, a lot of Kenyans are used to the conventional, yes. the old way. They grew up doing it, Uko Mashabani. Yes. How long does it take for them to understand, to be able to handle this without support from Bonakabiru so and his team? It, it takes two months okay. for training. So for training, we normally give them two months. Then we also give them, after the training, we give them one, one month for another month for practicals, to do the practicals. Then after that, they are now set. They can do it on their own. Okay. So within the institution, after the support that we've got, after the training, now the children are the ones who are learning the, these programs. Okay. And within the institution, we, we have five greenhouses. Okay. Let me give Bona uh, Bogwa there, that's uh, someone Bogwa is a technician, a chance to briefly explain the setup that's there. Uh, in fact, I should probably come and just join you if I can at this moment. Okay, I'm, I'm joining him just now. Uh, Samuel Mino, you can be talking to us. Tell us a little bit about the different plants that are being that you're growing there and the structure, the system as well. Okay, uh, what we are growing here is uh, lettuce. And uh, as you can see, uh, inside, inside the pipe, there is no media. It's just a cup with uh, the media. I don't know if you can hold the camera. That, that, just hold it up to that particular camera just so that... Okay, so okay. this is what it looks like when yeah. you pull it out. Exactly. So there's a structure holding the, this... Uh, the yeah, so the pipe is just to hold the, the cup. This pipe? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, you can see the roots are also coming out of the, of the cup. Uh, so when we are running the water, we run just a thin film of water within the pipe. Uh, this actually is called a nutrient film technique. Okay. So you have just a thin film of water. As you were saying, only 10% of the water is required. Okay. And uh, at the end of uh, this pipe, you can check on your end, uh, we can recycle and reuse that water uh, almost every day so how often do you need to run water through the structure we do it uh, three times a day three times a day for only five minutes so you can you can actually water manually or you can use a pump 
Okay. Yeah, depending on... So once the water comes in on that side, it yeah. drains on this side, exactly. then you can... You can re reuse... Uh, the, the water drains into a reservoir tank. Okay. And you can reuse the water over and over and over. Okay. So you use less water and also less nutrients. Because unlike uh, the normal gardening, once you water or you put the nutrients, there's the leaching and the draining. Uh, so you never get... You keep using a lot of water and a lot of nutrients. <coughs> And explain to us what we have here on the floor as well. This the setup looks slightly different. Yeah. Yes. The, this one is a hydroponic fodder. Uh, this is the fodder for livestock. And uh, actually, oh, you can. It's like a carpet. Yeah. Almost. Okay. Yeah, you can see it, it's 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 like a carpet. Uh, it's just uh, the the seeds, the barley seeds that have uh, formed roots and. Uh, the roots have intertwined uh, to form such uh, a mat. Mm -hmm. And this is a protein supplement. So the livestock do not feed on this alone. They need uh, other uh, forms of uh, uh, feed like uh, carbohydrates and the minerals. So th these uh, supplements, like for cows, this now uh, supplements the dairy meal. So if you're using this, you don't use uh, other protein concentrates. Okay. And yeah. how do you water these particular ones? This one we've seen how you do it. Do you just yes. pour water in there? Actually, uh, uh, at the end of each tray, there are some holes on, on the end of each tray. Mm -hmm. And so uh, normally there is a shelf uh, almost similar to this. So you, you put them in racks and... Uh, you oh, okay, can on water. a similar structure. Yeah. And, and you can also re, uh, get a gutter where you collect all the water and reuse uh, the water again. And finally, what do we have there at the end? Um, the, the, these are also barley seeds. Yeah, these are different stages of the, of the seeds. So you can actually see uh, this. These are just seeds that are pre-germinated. Okay. Yeah, so we, we normally uh, pre-germinate them in like a sack or a bucket, and then we lay them, as you can see, mm -hmm. and then uh, water three times a day in seven days you have a uh, fodder ready for your cows. So the whole process can be carried out on these trays till exactly. the very end, until where you either give it to your animals yes. or whatever you choose to do yeah. after that. Yeah, and uh, you see this one is just germination, uh, water, warmth and uh, air. So I think the, the limiting factor is water and uh, you, you use very little water because you are recycling. So I believe uh, it's something that... My, okay, uh, wow, I have been... <laughs> Mind if I drop this here? I can. Yeah, no, can, not to worry. Uh, yeah, we can look for it after that. Let me head yeah. back to the b the bench there and just get more uh, some one or two thoughts from uh, my guest there. Okay. Just the reaction in case. Uh, Francis, is there anything that someone missed? Even I'm sure you wanted to give your you know have your say as well. What what may he have missed as he was giving that explanation to us? Uh, he has given a very good explanation. Um, you see, for the fodder. Uh, we use it to feed different animals, basically ruminants, yeah? And we also, you can also use it to feed birds as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have your chicken, you have your feed there. If you have uh, your cows, you have your feed there. If you have your goats, you have your feed there. And even pigs as well. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, so, so basically, you see, when we have this kind of a system, imagine people in Massabit whose cows are dying because of hunger, yeah? And we have the technology here. It's simple, it's cheap, anybody can do it. How do we get the technology out there to the counties, for example? I'm trying to imagine people are watching us from across the country saying, how are you Nairobi? Is it to Nairobi? How are we going to get, uh, 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 is, this, is this technology available countrywide? It is available. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, last year, part of the things that we are doing with our, with our financials, KCB Foundation, we went all the way to Masabit, we went to Kajiado, uh, we went to Baringo, and training farmers on the same. Okay. Okay. And you find some, some farmers, they're actually even making money from this, besides the feeding their animals. Those who cannot afford it, yeah? There are those who will afford it, they'll, make, they'll, they'll, they'll do the barley fodder, and they'll feed to, they'll sell to the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Buona, James, can you, what message would you have to other people who are running homes like yours in terms of adopting this technology? What benefits would you say they can enjoy from this, I could say, very unique way of farming? Yeah, you find that, for example, for our, as our department, we are running around 26 institutions countrywide, and uh, I think it is a good idea if we can be able now to to, to replicate it in other ins institutions so that at least for example if you look at the the, the, the technology that we are using it is very simple with with uh, with the 
uh, vegetables with the vegetables it can be able now to, to to give it to the children tomatoes we don't need to buy them because we you've don't become, need that you become self sufficient yes we become self sufficient and we can apart from that one mm -hmm. we can be able to generate our own income okay. instead of always relying on the money from okay uh, from you allow me to interrupt you but thank you so much this was francis kabiru a hydroponic consultant we also had james nyaga who's the manager of kabete rehabilitation center and someone buga was on the other side just walking us through the setup for hydroponics